Hey guys, it's Justine Hernandez with Passion Style Purpose, living life not by default, but by design. But today, today is Conscious Conversations, and I have my girl, Ayla Shai. She is um, going to be our guest today, talking about for Conscious Conversations, about mind, body, and spirit, and healing, and how to like align all that fun stuff. So this beautiful goddess is amazing, and I love her energy. I recently took one of her uh, workshops, with, which is all about um, like aligning you and doing movement and words and tools and healing that she offers with the workshop and so that you can step into your higher self, into your power. And I just enjoyed the whole process that like the spin off and the twist that she had and incorporated movement and body, and that was like something really unique. Um, and I love that. And I love that you are a dancer and you practice different, um, types of dancing as well as being Latina, you know, so I'm loving all my Latina <laughs> coming around like, yeah, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> We're out here. <laughs> so yes, introduce and hello girl. Go ahead and talk about yourself. <laughs> hello. So my name is Ayla Shai and yeah, you pretty much said it all. So really what I do is I create spaces. Um, I facilitate spaces, um, and in those spaces, we basically use movement, we use dance, and we use journaling as a tool to really just unpack, unlearn, um, purge a lot of things that are in our body, and then move it out through dance. So it happens in phases, and you know, because you experienced it, but with the journaling and the writing, that's when we're really tapping into ourselves, tapping into memories, tapping into... Um, traumas that might live within the bodies and with each phase we go deeper and deeper and deeper and we also talk about it um, but then we're moving it through our body so we're recognizing where it lives we're moving with it and then we're moving it out and then at the end you know we just we become a more um a higher version of ourselves one that um I like to say I, I help women turn their wounds into wisdom. So now there's like an mm -hmm. inner knowing that happens um, within, you know, knowing where this trauma lives and identifying it. Because a lot of times we don't even recognize that it still lives there. Or sometimes we do, but we don't know what to do with it. Or we don't even recognize we have the power to push it out. And so by the end of the workshop, um, all of our wounds become wisdom because now we have an inner knowing and, a, and tools to use um, to now be in control. And so aside from I love that, that, uh, layers. <laughs> layers. You are through all the layers. Yes, and because us, you know, we're so layered too. And yes. so aside from the workshops, I also do monthly events with her healing place. Um, it's a collaboration effort. And basically, that's more relaxed. That's more laid back. And we just kind of, they're just sister circles. And so the series that we're doing is focused on womb wellness. And a lot of people might think, well, womb wellness, is this for like women who are trying to get pregnant or women who have kids? <laughs> no, not at all. So really, we have three brains in our body. Yeah, the brain, our cranium, we have our, uh, that's our like logic, our rationale. Um, that's where we get very analytical. Um, our brain is, we have another brain, our heart, which is where we feel, where, where our emotions live. And then our other brain is in our wounds. That's where our intuition lives. And so when we go through these series, you know, they each have different topics, but it's so layered again, because there's so much that lives there. So there might be issues that may have come up um, as a result or, or relating to fertility and wanting to have kids or, you know, being a mother, but then there's other issues that come up with just being a woman and not being able to trust ourselves. Cause if you don't trust yourself, um, that shows that there's some blockage in your womb, you know, not wanting to act on ideas. That's where we also birth visions. That's where we also birth our ideas. So when you don't act on it because you're fearful, well, there's another blockage there that has to do with not trusting or having faith in, in what what you um, can birth is not valuable. So yeah, this is a lot. Of I love it. <laughs> well, I know when we were talking about that actually in your workshop, um, like the fear of like the womb and stuff like that as well. I remember sharing just like I was afraid of my creativity being taken away from me because of a traumatic event that happened with my um, my eldest son. So. 
that was really interesting. Like, I love how it's all like correlated because like that womb area is all about creativity. It's about your inner child. It's about like that fun aspect, you know, exactly. and it's really interesting how it's also connected with our sexuality. Um, and it is very powerful. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Like all of that's all there. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I mean, and even if we go deeper into it and I, there's still a lot that I need to um, research, but I mean, if you can check the woo woo stuff and like the, the spirituality of it, um, there's power in the female orgasm. There's power in in <laughs> in that what we can do, right? Oh, it's an power. There's so much that lives there, and it's like, ugh, woman, like ugh, half of us don't even know what we could do. Like we we literally birth nations, not just through childbirth, but through birthing our ideas and birthing and rebirthing over and over and over ourselves because we are always getting to a new level of ourselves uh, and so when we do that then we allow other people around us to do the same and so we literally birth a new nation of people um a new consciousness new energy mm, i love it <laughs> so I want, I want you to share so one of my questions is i want you to share your story well it's not so much a question i just want you to share like your story and how you came about these amazing tools that you're teaching these women and um how do these tools help you align with mind body and spirit during your healing journey and i know that we're constantly healing so there's never like an end point it's just more of like these tools are working for me in this season of my life and that the next season, whenever it is, it may shift and change, you know, depending on where you're at, um, mentally, physically, spiritually, and all that, all that jazz, all them layers and stuff. Right, so, right, right, right. And that's interesting that you say that because I like to refer to it as your healing life cycle. And so each life cycle is going to look different. Like how cats have nine lives, but we have infinite life cycles of our healing process and so where I currently am so I'll just start from the beginning I'm Afro Latina uh, my mother is Dominican my father is Dominican and Cuban and so I've always kind of struggled with my identity of okay, I'm not Latina enough I'm not black enough kind of always being stuck in the middle I also have a dance background and so with my dance background um you know, growing up as a dancer, you want to be a prima ballerina, you want to be in somebody's company. And so I was really looking at dance from a technical aspect and from a personal Hold, hold on one second. One, someone's asking about, um, so, oh, my love, <laughs> what are you guys talking about? So we're talking about, we're having constant, conscious conversations talking about mind, body, and spirit and healing and the tools that we've used to help help, help us stay in alignment um, during the different seasons of, of our life. So that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Sorry, and we're ahead. so excited that you're here to join I know. us. Thanks for <laughs> watching. If you guys have any questions, please like feel free to ask, and we'll like answer them, and and you can share your experience as well, because that's always very helpful. Like we're these are we're two women sharing our own experiences, so we would love to hear yours as well. So go ahead, girl. <laughs> yeah. So again, so being Afro Latina, it's always kind of being in the middle. And then with my dance background, it was very much rooted in performing arts, and not so much the um, spiritual aspect of it, or the um, interpersonal relationship of movement, and how my body is really connected to my consciousness. So when I got to college, you know, I never called myself black because in my culture, like black men, you were African American, and while I grew up here in the United States, you know, my in, in the household, it, we were Dominican. Um, so it wasn't until I got to college where I took my first African American studies class and I was like, oh, okay, you know what? I am black. Like, it makes sense. And so that changed everything for me when it came to <laughs> dance. And dance no longer became, um, oh, you know, no, no, it no longer became choreography and steps. It became a an extension of who I am. And, you know, we still like dance is expressive. It's an expression of the language. It didn't really make sense to me what my language would look like, sound like, feel like on my body, on stage, anywhere, um, without knowing that part of me, right? So, yes. I mean, yes. Love to be some, like, when I hear them drums, oh, my gosh, it's like, I don't know what it is whether like in our Caribbean Latinist culture, you know, like when you hear drums or something very earthy, it just like comes over you and you can't 
help but move and like get into it and you're like yeah right and so that's interesting you say that because i believe in something called ancestral memory Mm -hmm. which basically means that there are certain things that are familiar to you that you can't really explain because you don't know like where you learned it where you heard it where you saw it who taught this to you you know but it's just something that's innate that's inside of you that just makes sense yeah yeah seemingly out of nowhere but i believe it's ancestral memory because it's something that's embedded in your in your dna your your body and your mind and spiritually too it's there and so when we talk about ancestral memory it's just like an innate um familiarity that cannot be explained but it is of your essence so same thing when there's like certain like drums that i hear certain rhythms and even just the way that my body moves it's like i didn't take no class to learn how to do this but I do it because it's just in me you know it's just it's it's just so good <laughs> that's why i love like techno house and trance music because it's like so many instrumental and you can express your body in different ways yes same i love house music too i think for me anything that's rooted in like a, a black rhythm um yeah. it just makes sense to me and that could it can span across languages across um cultures um but yeah again the, the ancestral memory it's like my body just knows what to do wow and that's and too like it's a way of communicate like you're saying a way of communication between like cultures and stuff like that imagine like this was a healing tool or even a way of worship a way of connecting with the divine connecting with your with the earth connecting with other tribes or other people and stuff like that and traditions like i love i love seeing that how it all ties in together it's very powerful yes and and speaking of connections you know it's a connection between other people i definitely believe that um there's also that like internal language of movement and really what we tap into moving into your high self workshops um because that's a language that you speak into yourself and in my last workshop i also mentioned a lot past selves but there's other women that you're talking to through your movement and they're all just reflections of you at different points in your life Mm. so would you say that dancing was like your main tool that you used and stuff like that to like help you get aligned with your body and your mind and your spirit and stuff like that um i say dancing and writing so (laughs) Yeah, so I always love poetry. I always love to write in my journal, always kept a journal. Um, and it's just nice to reflect back to and look at where you were at different moments in your life and your your brain like takes you there. It's like you become, you know, you go back to that memory. Um, so when I was in my poetry phase, I was writing a lot of poetry that was sad. Like and I would only write like after heartbreak or after like you know just something it was mostly heartbreak Um, you needed something inspirational when you write poetry (laughs) exactly exactly um so then one day like when i'm right reading these poems i'm like okay no like no something has to change so i challenged myself to start writing in celebration of myself and that is the moment where everything changed for me i say we're talking about healing life cycles like that was the beginning like beginning beginning beginning. i was like 19 at the time and so what i also challenged myself to do is for my 21st birthday i published a book of 21 affirmations self-truths and poems in celebration of myself and so that's where it's about her that's where that came in that's the title of the book and so um, how did she get the courage to do that like at being 21 like most people are so like wanting to party and and that's it (laughs) i still did that i still did that (laughs) Well, I mean, like, yeah, but, like, that's, like, solely focus, you know? <laughs> right. Well, actually, I mean, I was I was always myself, always very observant, um, and just always, you know, very introverted. And so I, like, met someone online who was a uh, I would message him, like, hey, I'm trying to do this, too. Can, you know, basically give me insight. So he, he actually played a really big role in my life at that time. Um, and so he kind of pushed me, and I, and I did it. But, um, oh my God, after I did it, I was like, what did you do? Why did you, oh my God, you're so naked. You're so seen, right? And so that was something I had to come over. And even now, 
even now to this day, it's like, do I want to share this? You know, and then you get into the nitpicky, like, okay, there's a typo there. I don't want anyone to see this, that thing. But yeah, um, after, right after it was um, and printed, I, you know, some woman had read it and wow, I felt like this was about me. And I did that purposely because I, I wrote it in third person so that anyone who could read it would yeah. think that, you know, it was about them too. And so when I realized there were so many similarities and how impactful just words could be, I was like, well, I want to do more with words because these words are about her and her and her and her and her and her and, her and me. Um, we need to get together. Yeah. So I wrote down in, in my journal, I want to, um, what I want to do with words about her is I want to have workshops for women. I want to do writing workshops. So I wasn't even integrating the dance. I would just want to do writing workshops. And, um, but I, you know, pushed to the side. I was still in school and I was busy and who, who's going to listen to 21 old and I didn't have enough courage anyway. So this, um, this year, I'm, I'm 24 now, so it's been three years. Um, and it just kept mm-hmm. coming up coming up and coming up coming up and you know it was just finally time and you know when you're going through your healing life cycle there are certain energies yeah. that you are drawn to and certain energies that push you and pull you and so what really kept coming up was words about her okay it's time and before this year last august or last september i started teaching afro-caribbean dance classes and i liked being in communion with women but i didn't particularly enjoy teaching steps so you know demonstrating and then someone copy yeah and I would try to encourage the woman like you know add your own flavor to it add your own you know do do it be you yeah I felt like everyone was in a box and I'm like I, like <laughs> they were like I want to make sure I'm doing it right I don't want to really mess it up you know? and I and I explain it in the beginning of every class I'm like this class isn't about me it's about you um tailor it to to your needs so there was just, there was a, a stagnant energy. Nobody wanted to be seen. Nobody really wanted to let go. So for other reasons, I ended up to, you know, I didn't want to teach my class anymore. And just energetically, I wasn't there anyway. Um, but I still wanted to do something with women. So I was like, you know what? And I was working with a coach at the time too. And I was just really pulled to finally do this workshop. And that's what I did. And so moving into the highest of this birth here in 2019, I did my first one back in February. And because I was, you know, at a new level of consciousness within my movement and dance practice, I knew that this had to be an integration of both, both the writing and the movement. And that's what made it it. So I'm happy that I never started back in 2015 um, because I wasn't, it wouldn't look the same, you know, and I I definitely needed everything that I learned and everything that I picked up and everything that I've experienced between now or between then and now for it to be what it is now. And it's going to keep evolving as I keep evolving as well. Okay. I got one more question for you before we have to like end this. Cause I'm like, okay. it's so good. Like, I know this is good. 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 Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what, uh, well, so what major belief system did you have to work through to support your healing journey? Ooh, um, there's so many. And <laughs> I said like this whole conversation, we keep talking about, ooh, girl, the layers, but it really, there's so many layers. Um, whew, I think within my identity and my culture, that was something that I had to come to terms with, you know, growing up. Um, I wanted to look more like my mom. She's very light skinned, has loose curly hair, um, very typical. And I say typical in quotes because it's not a typical Latina, right? We're so uh, yeah. diverse. I don't typically but, look like my Puerto Rican self because when people think of Puerto Ricans, they think of Afro Puerto Ricans instead of me. And they're like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and that's so crazy because on my, on my end, people would think that they look more like you. But, you know, again, it's all about perspective. So that was something that I had, I really have to get through. And um, reading Gloria on hey, was, um, hey. <laughs> hey, Christine. <laughs> so Sorry, reading girl, Gloria, I get all like, distracted. I'm like, oh, <laughs> That's fine. Um, so reading Borderlands, La Frontera by Gloria on is really, like, 
made me be okay with the fact that I constantly lived like I was on the border. You know, I was either too black or not black enough, too Latina, not Latina enough, and also even too white because I went to white schools growing up, or predominantly white schools. I won't say they're white, but they were gifted and talented yeah. schools, and the, and the norm was that there wasn't a lot of students who looked like me. And so I had to get over that hump. And then the hump of um, just imposter syndrome. Um, I say my most current struggle was um, imposter syndrome within like my age and being being young. And a lot of people that I've been meeting this year who are in alignment with what I'm doing are older than me. And so being okay with the fact that I, um, yes, we can see you. Yeah, we can <laughs> see you, girl. <laughs> um, so being okay with no, with the fact that I know, if that makes sense. You're doing great. Um, well, I, I love, I know, she's like, I'm not sure. So, but I love what you, what you talked about and how, like, your, the struggle, like, the major belief system that you're experiencing was, like, your identity and where it lies, you know, like, for me, I always, like, coming from, and like, we had this conversation where, like, I'm coming from the West Coast and the East Coast, and things are a little different, but, like, my family's from Connecticut, so when I moved to Virginia, I thought Connecticut, I thought Virginia was going to be, like, Connecticut. <laughs> so, because we're used to the different sounds of the culture, and we come in different colors and shapes and sizes, and, and so, like, coming from the West Coast, I was considered, I was, no one ever guessed that I was ever Hispanic or Puerto Rican. People thought I was, like, um was Brazilian or Arabic and Persian and like other things and so uh -huh. I always loved the mystery of myself so when people got to know me and they found out I was Puerto Rican they're like what you know <laughs> so like for me that was more exciting I love being different so I, I can see like being different was like hard for you because it's like you're trying to find your um like someone to mirror you know in some ways you know and that right. can only I can imagine that journey wow right yeah definitely and also being you know first generation American like my concept of race is much different than what my parents you know their, their concept of race so it expands across oceans across even across state lines because you know I could go to the Bronx in New York which is where most of my family is at and I really want to speak Spanish to me just because you know how it looks <laughs> but yeah. then I can go into a building like my here in Virginia, and they're speaking to me because of what? Because of how I look. The way I look has not changed. <laughs> it's who I'm around in the environment. And I see all the Morenos over here, and I'm like, oh, you must be Dominican, you must be Cuban, you must be Puerto And they're like, no, I'm black. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. It's just so different. It's so different. It's so different. I'm like, well, you look beautiful anyways. <laughs> no matter what culture you are, you're beautiful, and I love the way you look. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. And I, I just seriously love how, like, these are some really powerful tools. I mean, journaling is really, really, it, like, helps you take everything that's in your subconscious mind and, like, bring it on into, like, the material plane and writing it out so that you can make space for new thoughts or make space for things that you're wanting to cultivate because you, you keep that on there you keep that programming going and going and going and unless it's on paper you can't see what's going on with you and then adding that movement is just like oh you're like connecting with that and bringing it out of your body the the stuck energy and emotion that gets stuck in there and i that's beautiful to me Right, and everything is so interconnected. So um, talking about space and then talking about the body, you know, your inner space is a reflection of your outer space. So when you think about, like, your home and how you have all these different knickknacks or things that you have um, accumulated over the years, 
and like looking at something, you could tell a story about it. You could tell where you were in that moment of life and it kind of just takes you back there. So same thing when it comes to journaling, you know, you think of these as artifacts of the journey, the history of who you are, the history of Justine, but I'm going to sit in on this. Like when you look through your, <laughs> when you look through your, uh, you know, it's literally like different versions of you, you know? And so I, that's why I am so fascinated with like the, how can I put this, the relationship between inner space and outer space, because it's really the same, how you're feeling on the inside, what you're going through on the inside and where you are is going to reflect outwardly and not just in your home and like in things in physical space but like the space in your relationships who are you hanging out with more now that you weren't hanging out with then when you were on page 12 of your journal now you're on page 56 of your journal who are who's in your space now and you can see why because you see the trends the most i guess the easiest way to see the trend or to see your journey is through the writing you know mm-hmm. In your body, you can too. Okay, I have new rolls that came out of nowhere. I have new pains, I have new aches, <laughs> or maybe I'm a little upset, you know, or just just how are you carrying yourself? Yeah. But I think the easiest way to really keep track, um, because we don't notice our body enough, we don't. Um, but you can always reread, and it's there and it's yeah. permanent, you know. And so I, I'm a huge like fan of journaling. Anytime, anytime I meet with somebody and they tell me they don't journal, and I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, I really want you. We want you to go to the store and buy one. Like, you don't have to. Day one, today I ate an apple. And I was like, it's literally just about your thoughts. What is on your mind? This brain fart, like, whatever. You're right. Nothing is on my mind. <laughs> and then, like, exactly. I'm not And just write it in life. life. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but like, okay, why why is nothing on your mind? What's you know? And yeah. the, the more you do it, just the more it's really not even just about the journaling. It's not even about um, getting down on yourself because you missed the day. Because I don't even journal every day. I, I journal when I feel yeah. called to write. You know, mm-hmm. Same I love that you said that. Oh, yeah, give me permission, girl. Yes, write when you feel called to write. You know, the same same way. Work out when you feel. <laughs> when you feel like it <laughs> which to me is not very often <laughs> you know that's really just cultivating the religion of yourself you know when you're when you're cultivating a relationship with somebody else you call them you text them you check in on them you should yeah. be doing the same things to you and then for you and the way you do that is through journaling and I, it's funny, like I used to journal a lot when I was a kid, but I also did a lot of structural art as a way to express myself. And what I did actually, when I um, moved from San Diego to California, uh, to, to Virginia, um, one of the things that I looked through was my old journals and I like saw the despair and the sadness that I was experiencing a few years back, um, like probably like over 10 years ago now. Mm-hmm. And so when I was fully stepping into my next level of my higher self, I took those journals and I actually um, burned them in a ceremonial way. Um, that was one of the rituals. It was me. It was me stand, uh, like saying, I am releasing all of these things that were no longer serving me and I'm stepping into the next phase of who I am. Mm-hmm. And I no longer have to hold that energy anymore. And so I totally did a burning ceremony, put the bonfire up and like did it. I like to do things like that on a full moon. It's very like intentional. And I know it's kind of woo woo, <laughs> but it's like. No, I love woo woo. <laughs> I, mean, I love woo woo. I love symbolism. It. Yeah, it's like the best time to do something that represents something and it's part of nature. So why not? You know what I mean? And if you're a pyro, even better. Right. (laughs) Burn it. Burn that shit. So and that's what I did. And it felt so good, you know? And I would say like even if you have journals from the past and they don't reflect you anymore or you know if you're not using them to write a book you know I would recommend burning them as a way of releasing that old so that you can make space for the new and that's I think that's part of like that decluttering the me- the internal environment and your external space yeah because uh, I have I had a girlfriend that had journals from when she was like a teenager until like or like actually 
I think it was nine years old till like 25 and she's 28 right now, 27, 28. And so she got rid of a lot of those journals that were old and she burned them and did that whole thing. And she said that she felt so it felt like a release. And I was like, yeah, that's how you want to feel. You know, you want to feel like that baggage isn't on you, but rather exactly. it's just letting it go. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. So okay. I, I'm very protective of my journals. I don't know that I would burn it, um, but I do see why. And, and I think even in my workshops, that's why I have that ritual of like letting go, not necessarily who you were, but like what you were carrying at that, at that moment. So I definitely believe in like, you know, the release and the power and release as well. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I love it. So do you have any last thoughts? I would love for you to share your, um, your workshop that you're going to be having soon. And yeah, so I would love for, if people want to learn more about that, I can um, share that and stuff like that. So and yes. also share your website and your handles and where they can find you and all that jazz. Yes, yeah, so coming up, um, so I did mention the monthly events that I'm doing with um, Her Healing Place. It's a collaboration. And so we're doing these monthly sessions called Soul Nurturing Sessions. And they're really just sister circles. You know, they're, they're really chill. Um, but each, each session is different. So again, the um, theme is room wellness. And so last month we did belly dance. This month we're actually going to have a sister circle where um, it's called Versus from the JJ, And we just talk about um, experiences that are related to our wounds. So, I mean, it could be sexual experiences, um, our experience with just our personal relationship to the womb. Um, anything that has to has to do with room really honestly so it's really chill um and, and it's just, i mean there's gonna be wine you know we're gonna laugh we're gonna talk about all that kind of stuff um what is that yeah, the yes, girl. oh it's in virginia beach um at an event a, a space called event junkie so if you head over to my page ayla shy heels um you can see the flyer there or click on the link in my bio and you'll see the address because i don't know it at the top of my head but it's in virginia beach <laughs> Um, but we're also having a special guest. Her name is Neki, and she is the owner of Crown Queen Bath. It's a um, yoni steaming uh, boutique in Norfolk. And so she's actually going to have, she's going to give an educational piece on um, really, the vagina. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, so that whole the whole health, the health yeah. part of yeah. everything. Yeah, so that's going to be yes. really fun. It's a Friday night. It's going to be wine. Um, there's also going to be vendors, and you can shop around. And it's just a really chill. Ooh. And what date is this? Um, October 18th. It's a Friday. Okay. Ooh, dang. I know. I, know. I was bummed that I couldn't make it to the belly dancing one because I saw the cool beads. I was like, Ooh. It was fun. It was very intense, too. Girl, my cat. <laughs> I know, I bet. Oh my goodness. All right, girl, we got to wrap this up. But I so okay. loved having you and for conscious conversations and sharing your amazing like journey. And like, I love your energy and I love what you're doing. And I think it's so awesome. And I can't wait for people to, you know, hear more about you and go and take her awesome workshop and event because that's going to be pretty badass. 